Did Martin Scorsese stick his name on this movie because it's earned it or is a thank you for the departed? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Revenge of the Green Dragons. These guys are pulling in millions of dollars a year, smuggling people. Two immovable forces, neither side willing to back down. What would it take for you to put it all on the line? There's no way both of us walk away, not from that. What do you want, Sonny? They're going down. All of them. There's a storm coming, detective. The Departed is the movie that finally won Scorsese an Oscar, period. Yes, while he'd been nominated many times and his films had won many Oscars for others, he didn't personally walk away with the gold until he made that film, which was a remake of 2002's Infernal Affairs, directed by Andrew Lau and Alan Mack. Lau, who started out as a cinematographer for the likes of Wong Kar Wai, is one of Hong Kong's most prolific and well-known directors, and now he's making his second run at Hollywood. His first attempt was back in 2007 with The Flock, starring Richard Gere and Claire Danes, yet here in the U.S., straight to video. But now he's back with a film that depicts real-life Asian gangs in 1980s Queens, complete with Scorsese vouching for his work. And it's not a ridiculous leap for Scorsese, who's depicted almost every type of gang to hit the New York City area. Italians, Irish, and even Wall Street. Plus, with Asia's growing box office muscle, Revenge of the Green Dragons could very well be in the right place at the right time. But while Lau and Scorsese make sense, what's with this cast? Harry Shum Jr. from Glee and several dance movies? Justin Chan, the guy doing his best Weekend at Bernie's impression in 21 and Over, previously from bit roles on the Disney Channel and in Twilight? And then there's Kevin Wu, best known as YouTube comedian Kev Jumba. Hmm, the producers here probably wanted Asian talent somewhat known to American audiences, but then what about The Walking Dead, Stephen Yoon, or Nickelodeon and Big Hero 6's Ryan Potter? Or maybe this could have been a big break for some unknown Asian actors or experienced actors from Asia to break into Hollywood, as Lau himself is hoping to do. So let's see if this outside-of-the-box thinking with casting pays off and if Scorsese is right to associate Revenge of the Green Dragons with his own iconic gangster films. I think Revenge of the Green Dragons is totally worthy of the Scorsese name. Uh, in fact, it draws quite a bit from Goodfellas. They're a set, in my opinion. Uh, but one of the reasons people might be having trouble making that comparison in a positive way, I think some people at first glance might say this is a Goodfellas ripoff, I think that's really unfair to Revenge of the Green Dragons because they're not acknowledging the big divide between the two films economically. Goodfellas had a lot more money to play with. Scorsese was able to do sumptuous cinematography, uh, and that's something they simply couldn't do here on Revenge of the Green Dragons. But story-wise and structurally, the way the movies are put together, they're very much on par. And I think to handicap Revenge of the Green Dragons, because it doesn't have amazing, uh, you know, cinematography and sumptuous visual shots, uh, is not fair, because you're really telling small films, they can't be ambitious, they can't try and tell a big story, uh, if, because they don't, they simply don't have the money. Because I think Revenge of the Green Dragons succeeds in what it's trying to do, and that's to give you an inside look at the way Asian gangs work, much the way Goodfellas gave everyone an inside look as to how the Mafia was set up. Now, granted, Revenge of the Green Dragons does have two weak points, and those weak points, I'm afraid to say, are Justin Chan and Harry Shum. Now, they try very hard uh, to do a good job in their roles here, and it's, it's a tall order to fill the shoes of Ray Liotta and Robert De Niro, the roles those two actors play here, uh, you know, their counterparts. But they just simply are out of their depth. They, I feel, are miscast. Maybe at some point in their careers they'll be able to pull this kind of role off, but they simply just cannot do it. Also, Harry Shum is uh, asked, asked by the movie to age up considerably, uh, much the way Robert De Niro's character does in Goodfellas. You know, you see them for quite a long span in his life. But Harry Shum Jr. never ages. He never changes the way he, his demeanor, or even, you know, there's nothing done with makeup or, uh, you know, special effects makeup to try and age him up either. Uh, all the characters around him get older, and you're like, why is Harry Shum Jr. still so young? But there was, that's, this is not to say there wasn't some very good acting in the movie. Do you know who was good? Well, Kev Jumba, I thought, in the Joe Pesci role, was quite good. I was impressed with what a good job he did, considering he has not very much acting experience. He's a, a YouTube personality, and he was very, very good. But the two actors that blew everyone away 
were the child actors who played young Sonny and Steven. They were very good, especially the child actor who played young Steven. What they're asked to do in this movie, uh, very much adult gang activity, uh, is impressive. Not and, and that not only there that we see that this is something that goes on in Asian gangs that uh, you know members are inducted so at such a young age, but that these actors are able to pull it off. Uh, the other other flaw in the film is a, a last last minute twist ending which I felt was a little bit too far-fetched or you know maybe the seeds for it weren't sown accurately enough so that you were like oh wow that blew my mind and so you were just kind of like what 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 happened uh, but still despite those flaws I really enjoyed the film and I thought it was fascinating to see the way Asian gangs work they're very different than uh, the Irish and Italian mobs here in the United States that we've come to know so well through movies and I'd say they're the closest to the South American gangs that we've seen in films like Scarface but even here there's a different dynamic uh, which hasn't been explored because it's unique I believe to these gangs uh, and that's that these Asian, Asian gangs uh, are you know, they call their members from an, a population of illegal immigrants. So the choices to these people coming into the United States illegally are limited to begin with. Uh, and also the gangs have to operate a certain way because they're here illegally. Uh, and just the rules they have to keep off people's radar and, and everything, the, every, the way everything's handled. Very, very interesting. And this is a group, as you'll see in the movie, that has tried very hard to stay off the radar. So to see them brought on and to, to look into their world, I think is really fascinating and a, a great first step and an, an important first step for this kind of cinema. Recently somebody asked me why are stereotypes perpetrated by the entertainment uh, industry and media and I said well those are the only stories that really get told but I think this is a great example of Hollywood or this isn't you know a pure Hollywood production actually it's coming from Asian talent which is the way this is going to have to happen of showing a realistic depiction of you know a, a, a segment of the Asian population here in the United States and what they go through. This isn't a martial arts movie. You know, there are very little stereotypes here, and, and I liked that quite a bit. So that's my review of Revenge of the Green Dragons. I definitely suggest you uh, check it out, but just realize that the acting isn't going to be quite up to par. I think once, and, and just, in, just from Justin Chan and uh, Harry Shum, and once you move past that, I think you'll be able to enjoy what's really quite a good film. All right, thank you so much for tuning into my review, and you can check out some other episodes right now.